But uh, Hunter Biden, in many ways, is a weakness for the former vice president because of his work. He was a, I'll call it, I'll call it out, he's a swamp creature, like many people, uh, trading it in his family name to make money around the world. A father knows his success when he turns and looks at his son or daughter and know that they turned out better than he did. I'm a success. I'm a hell of a success. That headline involving Vice President Biden and his youngest son discharged from the U.S. Navy after failing a drug test, testing positive for cocaine. Hunter Biden, the Vice President bragged he completed the Biden military family, joining the Navy Reserves at 43, his father joking about the late decision. We have a lot of bad judgment in my family. My, my son, who's over 40, just joined the United States Navy, is about to be sworn in as an officer. But pride soon turned to disgrace. Hunter failing a drug test one month after receiving his commission, testing positive for cocaine and discharged less than honorably. Hunter Biden, Vice President Joe Biden's youngest son, was discharged from the Navy Reserve after testing positive for cocaine. Hunter was commissioned in May 2013 and assigned a coveted position as a public affairs officer in Norfolk, Virginia. But U.S. officials confirm the very next month after reporting to his unit, Biden was given a routine drug test, which he failed. Military service has been a big part of the Biden family's public platform. I'm looking forward to standing with our son Hunter when he is commissioned as an ensign in the United States Navy. He follows in the footsteps of two of his grandfathers, who have also served in the Navy. Earlier in his career, he worked as a lawyer, lobbyist, and policymaker under President Clinton, before joining his father on the campaign trail in 2008. Uh, as the crisis hit the boiling point just last month, the vice president, here he was, visiting Ukraine, uh, spoke of the need to boost energy output. Today, the White House is saying, again, no conflict of interest, that Biden's son is now running the legal department of Ukraine's number one private gas supplier. First of all, the White House refers all callers to the vice president's office. The okay. vice president's office has very little to say, uh, just that Hunter Biden is a private citizen and a lawyer, uh, and the vice president does not endorse any company and has no involvement uh, in this company. So basically they're saying nothing to see here, folks. I think what's very interesting and viewers might find most interesting is this happens a lot more than people think. In 2014, Ukrainians, sick of corruption, revolted. Vice President Joe Biden went to Kiev to help the new government. You have to fight the cancer of corruption. But then something strange happened. Just three weeks later, a Ukrainian natural gas company, Burisma, accused of corruption, appoints Hunter Biden, seen here in their promotional videos, to their board of directors, paying his firm more than a million dollars a year. We're following right now the situation where President-elect Biden's son, Hunter, announcing that he is under federal tax investigation. I understand you're also learning uh, that the uh, federal investigators are specifically interested in, uh, Evan, in a gift of a diamond, a diamond that was given uh, supposedly to Hunter Biden in China. Tell us about that. That's right, Wolf. Uh, there is a very curious episode that happened in 2017. Hunter Biden described some of this here. He said that at the end of a meeting with uh, this businessman, Ye Jianming, who his, he was trying to get into business with, uh, at the end of that meeting, he goes up to his hotel room and he receives a 2.8 carat diamond. Now, it's not clear uh, what happened to the diamond. According to the account that Hunter Biden provided to the New Yorker, he says he gave it to some associates and he doesn't know what happened uh, to it. Well, I, I disagree with you a little bit. I don't think this is merely a muddy the water story. This is a story that at least half the American people understand the Hunter Biden story as a story of the swamp the elite, buddy-buddyism, using your family influence to do well in life. The American people don't like it. His son was on the board of this Ukrainian energy company at a time he was vice president. Obama, the president, asked him to go to Ukraine to talk about corruption issues. So there is at least the appearance there, but listen. I don't discuss business with my son. I didn't know that was the case in it, when in fact I found out after the fact. And because I don't discuss things with my son or my family, because I don't want to have any knowledge of any, I, I don't want to be accused of, well, you talk with your son or you talk with your whomever. If you're the vice president in an administration that is proudly boasting it's the most ethical administration in history, isn't that backwards? 
Yeah. Isn't that backwards? There's, I don't want to hold them. To, you know, to, it, you might be holding them to a different standard. There's a lot of people who trade in on their political connections and their family connections in Washington. But I don't talk to my son. Don't you need to know? So that you can say, Mr. President, I can't go to Ukraine. Hunter has business dealings there. You need to send somebody else. Am I wrong? Uh, no, and, and I don't think Biden has really addressed the fundamental question of that, about when did you talk to Hunter? Uh, why did you not talk to him earlier? And as president, how can the American public be assured that your son is not going to be uh, presenting an appearance of a conflict of interest? And I don't, I don't think he's fully addressed those questions yet. If, if you read that New Yorker profile of Hunter Biden, which came out a couple of weeks ago, uh, they they talk about this. They talk about, you know, Hunter Biden used to be on the board of MBNA or work for MBNA. And, and uh, as a senator, Joe Biden had a lot of b bills and, and stuff related to banking. These years allegations of corruption involving Joe Biden have been raised it. Um, have these, have I'm sorry, I'm not answering your responding? questions, okay? Is We're talking about the coronavirus. That's what I, I don't have all day for questions. That's what we're taking now. This is a test for Biden because his son was, as many people in Washington are, a consultant who, if his name was Hunter Smith or Hunter Doe, uh, might not have had the access that he had. Uh, how big of an issue? Uh, this, so far, from what everybody has done in terms of reporting, they've not uncovered anything that looks actually illegal. But it looks like that old standard definition of Washington, what's, what's legal, is really what's troubling to people. So he got hired, got put on the board of this gas company, and as you said, if his name was Hunter Walker, would he have done so? And so that doesn't look good. Biden does have a problem here, by the way. I mean, I, I have to say, $50,000 a month, for Hunter Biden, clearly uh, to be selling influence, because otherwise no one would ever pay him that kind of money for a company that, frankly, was pretty corrupt and has been uh, before and has been since under And um, is that Joe Biden's fault or problem? And, uh, no, but it's hard to imagine Joe Biden wasn't aware of it. And I think that I, I expect that President Obama, if he had known about the reality of this situation, would have probably told Biden, get rid of this. Like, we, we shouldn't have your son working in this situation. That would have cost him something. And I, and I, I fear, like, even if maybe Biden wasn't aware, but Biden should have been aware that that would cause a uh, cause an issue. And I know conservatives are really seizing on this, right? Because one of the biggest concerns uh, in terms of optics had to do with some of his business dealings in both China and Ukraine. Mm -hmm. Can you explain that to all of us? That's right. I mean, there's this sense that Hunter Biden benefited over the course of his career with being in proximity to Joe Biden's power. There's no evidence that Joe Biden actually did anything wrong or did anything to sway things in Hunter Biden's favor. He's denied that his son ever lobbied him for anything. But, you know, when you look at uh, Ukraine, for instance, uh, Hunter Biden was on the board of this energy company and it was being investigated by a prosecutor in Ukraine. Joe Biden got that prosecutor fired by threatening to withhold U.S. aid. Now, uh, everyone says that's because the prosecutor was deep Deeply corrupt, but you can see what the optics are. He takes Air Force Two with Joe Biden to China in 2013. A few uh, days later, this business deal is finalized. And so, you know, it sort of gives the, the impression that, that Hunter Biden is constantly using his connections with his father essentially to get these deals done. And there's an interesting quote in this New Yorker article. And it says, as a former senior White House aide put it, there was a perception Hunter Biden was on the loose, potentially undermining his father's message. Another former business associate said, the appearance of a conflict of interest is good enough at this level of politics to keep you from doing things like that. And Brooke, frankly, that's what Republicans are betting on. They're betting on the fact that the appearance of impropriety is just as important as the actual impropriety itself. He said, you have no authority. You're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. 